What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with Batania. Uh, today guys we are going to be continuing our work on the automated tree farm that we worked on last episode and we're going to be taking the wood that we've been collecting and we are going to turn it into charcoal and then we're going to turn that charcoal into mana using the endo flame setup very similar to what we have over here. Now this one I had to manually put charcoal in and that charcoal or coal I guess was stuff that I was getting from mining or just cutting down trees when I needed mana. And although it's been sufficient up until this point, it's kind of annoying to keep managing. And since we've got the better automated tree setup over here, I thought, you know what, let's combine them so that I can just AFK here and get all the mana that I need. So there's a lot of different stuff that we have to work with today. And there's a lot of tweaking that we have to do to this setup over here. But uh, first things first, we have to do a little bit of crafting. So we're going to start out by crafting five floating white flowers. And that's because we're going to be using a lot of floating plants today. Um, so get these, split that up, glimmering white flower, just our typical craft with the pasture seeds and the dirt. And there we go. We got our floating flowers and now we got a lot of flowers we have to craft. So we're going to be crafting, I should fill up a fair bit of these buckets right now, uh, fill up all of them for now. So we'll toss in our gray petals, light gray, air rune, redstone root, and we will get our hopper hawk out. So there we go. We are going to be using a second one just to allow time management to be a little bit easier when it comes to certain things being picked up. Then we are going to grab these out and we're going to make two endo flames. So there we go. Get one of them. Oh, why did I try? I tried to throw that in way too early. Uh, we got to get our gray petal out. There we go. Now we should, we should be able to make the endo flame. Did I mess that up? Two brown. One red, one light gray. Oh, did I do regular gray? You know what? Let's come over here and let's get our light gray flower. I messed that up a little bit. So one of these should be sufficient. Let's get this out of here. Yep, okay. So there we go. So we got our two brown. Then we'll do our red and our light gray. I was super confused for a second there. I was like, this doesn't require a rune to make. So then we got two brown again, light gray, red throw that in there and I'll just dump these up here so we don't accidentally use them for anything and the gray flowers can go back over in this setup this has been the best thing ever for getting flowers I haven't even had to turn it on in a very long time just because of how fast you get them but it is so so great of a setup uh, next thing we're going to be making is another agricarnation just because it seems that there is enough mana generation going on that we can run Pretty much all four of these without any problem and i did not forget the rune for it this time and the last thing we are going to be making right here which is probably the most annoying out of all of them because it required a rune of the summer and fire is going to be the exo flame so what the exo flame does if you don't already know it's pretty much the exact opposite of an endo flame so instead of generating mana it is in consuming things that burn it is going to allow you to take mana and heat furnaces that are around it so we're only going to be using it for one furnace today but uh you can heat multiple around it and it also even gives them a little bit of a speed boost so we're going to be using one furnace today like i said and then we got to grab a couple things in here we need a mana spreader and a mana pool now the reason i'm using this is just because i don't really have any central mana setup right now uh right over here is kind of where i've been putting my mana and working with stuff but it's not really a, you know, a setup. It's just kind of a couple endo flames. So uh, moving it will not really be any big issue for my base, I guess. Uh, next thing we're going to do is take some mushrooms. And we are going to bring them over here. And we are going to turn them into uh, some spores. So if we look up spores, we can see that we have the infestation spores. Now I guess I can go over and show you guys in the Lexica Botania. But if we go back and we go to functioning flora... A lot of you guys have brought up modulating delay, and that's when you use podzel or uh, mycelium, and you plant stuff on it, and it allows you to have a delay on those flowers, because as we all know, generating flora th picks things up before functioning flora, and then when you have two of the same kind, they basically will compete, and one of them will do the action first, and so some problems we've been having has been related to that, and floating flowers cannot be, you know, kind of fixed because they don't get planted on anything, so to fix them... You are going to be using boreal seeds and infestation spores. So boreal seeds should turn it the same way as podzol and uh, infestation spores. will do even more than that in terms of delay and those will make it like it's on mycelium. And if you don't really know about that, you can look back on this page 
and you can see Podzol will add a small delay, and then uh, Mycelium will create a longer delay. So we're adding the longest delay possible to floating flowers. This really is the only way to add a delay to floating flowers, and it's a little bit, it's actually kind of easier than finding Mycelium, I guess, because all you gotta do is throw them in here, and you get them out, and then you right-click these on the floating flowers, and you're good to go. So we have that, and the last thing we need is going to be an open crate, and we'll craft that like this. And then we're gonna need two hoppers. So regular hoppers, first time using those in this series, unlike hopper hawks, which we use all the time. So we've got that, and I guess we need to go and craft our floating flowers now. So we're gonna be crafting two floating endo flames. We're gonna be crafting a floating hopper hawk. We're gonna craft our floating, where is it, our floating exo flame right there. And then we can craft our floating agricarnation right there. So now we have everything crafted, we are ready to go. I know that was a fair bit of prep time, I do apologize, but it will be well worth it in the long run. So this thing has been running over here. It actually hasn't been much time because I didn't have to really gather any supplies to make this new setup. So I haven't gotten a ton of wood, but we're already at over a stack right now. Uh, maybe we have some apples in here. You could put down a Gorma Lily if you wanted to use this to generate stuff and we may eventually do that. But I do need a new food source eventually since I only killed so many cows around here. I guess there are a fair bit if you look at the mini map, but uh, you can see that this thing is running flawlessly. It is great. No issues with clearing out the area at all. And uh, yeah, we should be ready to set stuff up. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to get rid of this redstone torch right here. And we're also going to get rid of this delay. So we don't need this anymore. We'll break the hourglass, get all this stuff back, and we should be good to go. Now what we're also going to do is we are going to get rid of these two chests right here. We don't need them over here anymore. So we can break these. It's going to spill out a fair bit. We're just going to pick it up real quick. And, oh, I don't, we got to break the item frame too. And we're going to break this block, and we're going to do the same right over here. So get all this stuff off, break this, and get it back. So we're going to leave this hopper hawk over here. I'm going to toss these back on the ground. But what we're going to do is we're going to add an infestation spore to this. So you see it now looks like it's part mycelium that it's planted on. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I never use it, so... Uh, yeah, I hope I hope I am pronouncing that right. But what this will allow it to do is that the ran and carpus will pick up these before this does. So when they drop, they have to sit on the ground for a certain period of time before the ran and carpus, and the hopper hawk will register that they are there. And thus the problem before was caused by the fact that these are both functioning flora, so they will compete to see which one picks it up first. And typically the hopper hawk would be the one that would win, and so it would take a long time before the ran and carpus would plant it. But now the ran and carpus will get priority over this. Now the reason that we are doing two hopper hawk setups is because if we had the wood still attached to this one, then this could pick up the wood and place it back down because the wood can be placed on dirt. So we are going to put another hopper hawk setup, which will be slightly moved over on this side that will be picking up wood and apples and it will have no delay and that will allow it so that the random carpet should never pick up the wood. It should never replace the wood. It will just pick up the saplings like you can see right there easily picks up the saplings before they get picked up by this. But this hopper hawk will allow it that the saplings are all collected in one spot. They're not spilling out all over the place. Now I'm going to pick up this wood manually just because I don't want it sitting on the ground. But what we can do is take another agricarnation and put it right over here below this for the sake of symmetry. Now if this thing does start losing mana up here, this mana pool, and um, we can check on it right now, then I will just cut it down to three. But it actually seems to be gaining mana right now. So... Four, you might even be able to use five, but four should be fine for now. I don't really see any point in using more. This already grows way, way faster than I could have ever hoped for. But now we can see that the leaves typically grow out to right here. So we don't want to put anything in the way that would interfere with those, but we can start building right out here. So what we're going to do first is grab out a hopper and we're going to grab out our floating hopper hawk. And I guess I can grab out some building blocks, some living rock blocks. So we're going to look, and this is the central block right here. We're going to want to build out from this. And wow, this really is growing super, super fast. But, whoa, this is growing super, super fast. Wait. Okay, so it did just, it is replacing the wood right now. But it's replacing it because this wood is old wood from the other tree. That's the problem with not having all this. So it should replant that now. So we're going to have some issues until we, we remake the setup. But I'm going to try and go up. I think we want to go up 
to this block right here. And it may need to go up one more, but I think we want the floating hopper hawk right there. And we want to place down next to it a hopper. And I guess actually we're going to place down the hopper now. We're going to place the furnace down below it. And then we're going to go back up and we're going to break this. And it already tried to deposit a bunch of stuff in there, but we're going to place that down. And then we are going to get our item frame and we're going to put some wood in it. So let's get our item frame out. We'll put that right on there. And you can definitely use a hopper hawk to put stuff into a hopper because a hopper is technically an inventory. So this will allow the wood to get deposited right in here. Now, something I haven't tested out and it might allow you to simplify this setup is using a furnace as an inventory. I don't know if hopper hawks can put stuff straight into furnaces, but I also don't know if it would insert it into the top or bottom slot. Now, this is important because we don't need to use any of the wood as actual fuel. It is all becoming charcoal, which then gets converted to mana, which then gets converted back to heat, but it uses much less heat or much less mana to create heat than it would if you used a piece of charcoal to use it for heat. So uh, basically what I'm saying is putting the hopper on top allows for two different things. If you have a very fast setup, it gives you a buffer. Along with that, it also allows it to deposit it guaranteed into the top slot. So I'm sure a lot of you will probably know if you can use the furnace like that. And if you want to just drop this down one level then and have it put straight into the furnace, you can easily do that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Now we want to make sure that this is bound to that mana pool. Perfectly fine. This has a ton of mana coming into it. It's still going up as you can see, even with this bound to it now and this bound to it. And honestly, this doesn't need to be bound to a mana pool uh, if you don't want it to. Well, I guess, yeah, it actually kind of does because it's pretty darn close or it needs to be pretty darn close to uh, pick up blocks in a radius of six. But what we're going to do is leave this one without any of the infestation spores. Now that's because uh, the wood we want to get picked up right away and same with the apples. So one of these chests is then going to be used for apples. So we'll throw this down and get our apple out and put that right on there. And there we go. Now it did pick up an oak sapling and I got the rest of them, but we'll throw those back down. They will get picked up by this and drop back on that block. So we can now get rid of this living rock right here because we don't really need it. It's just kind of cluttering up the place. So this setup is good to go. The apples get collected, the wood gets collected, and it ends up in here. So let's verify that that actually does happen when it gets thrown down. It should end up right in the top slot of this furnace right here. Yep, there we go. Gets put in the hopper and we are all set. So now what we need to do is get this turning into charcoal. So the way that we're going to do that is using the exo flame. Now this is a floating exo flame and this can go really anywhere near this block. And I think I'm going to put it right over here. Now this is going to start drawing mana from probably that mana pool. And that is perfectly fine for now, but we're going to get a new mana pool. That this is going to get bound to very, very soon. So what we're going to do now is you can see that this is getting charcoal. It's going pretty darn fast because the exo flame does offer a speed boost. So what we're going to do is take the open crate that we had and we're going to put it down right here and we're going to break this block. So we're going to break that block, break that block, put down another living rock just because I like having the living rock in the ground, put down a block right here, put down an open crate and we're going to break this and then we're going to come in here and we're going to attach a hopper. So now this is going to drop and if we break this one, we should see it. It's going to drop all of that charcoal down there. Now what we can do is leave that covered up. It doesn't matter and we can take out our two endo flames and we can put them down over here. And it doesn't really matter where you put them down. So I guess we can put them down. Um, they need to be within a three block radius of this. So I've just been putting them down right here. And now what we can do is take the infestation spores and put them on these two. Now, the reason I'm doing this, it might seem a little odd. If you don't know, the endo flames have a radius of three to pick stuff up and eat it and, and turn it into uh, mana. Um, but the reason I'm doing this is because if by some odd chance some wood gets flung out here, we don't want these to consume it first. We want the hopper hawk to get it first. So adding some delay to these will prevent them from ever eating any saplings, eating any wood, anything like that. If it does by some chance come out over here. So the last thing we're going to do is add a mana spreader that these will be hooked up to and a mana pool over here. So right like that. So we're going to take these and we are going to bind them to this and that's going to allow them to start eating the stuff and it's going to fill up this mana pool. And then this exo flame is then going to get bound to this mana pool too. So what that'll allow us to do is not have to worry about this mana pool running out of mana. Now, if this one keeps generating mana, then we could easily hook this up. The exo flame doesn't use a ton of mana, but unfortunately there's no good way to turn it off. It doesn't have a redstone root or anything. 
So as far as I'm aware, there's no great way to actually stop it from functioning. I did have the idea that if there's nothing in here, it doesn't need to function using a comparator. You could easily check, but unfortunately, because there's no redstone root, uh, it's not as easy to just send it a signal and turn it off. But as you can see, this is generating mana in here. Now, uh, what? Oh, this is all the way over here. Okay, it got picked up anyway, but... Uh, this is going to be really fast to start out just because we've got a fair bit of stuff in there, but eventually it will slow down. If it doesn't and we do need more endo flames, I can easily make them uh, as long as you just put them close enough that it can pick up the blocks. You should have no issue at all. And as you can see, the fourth agricarnation is really, really speeding this up. So if we come over here and look at this mana pool, still fine. I'm going to always be checking on these just to make sure because, you know, on the odd chance that it starts losing mana, the, basically the whole system is made on a backup of mana in pools like this that allow everything to function that needs mana even if it's only a little bit so it is very important that you keep an eye on it if you start trying to max out this setup uh so yeah i think that is going to be it for today guys i am really loving this setup i know this isn't the fastest mana generating setup uh i you know i told you guys that we were going to look into doing the let's take a look over here for generating flora i know i told you guys we were going to look into the entropinium but i do need to get some gunpowder going for that i do need to get a lot of different things going to actually have this running because you need tnt for it uh, but what i think we're going to do is look into that in an episode or two because that will get us a ton of mana and for now this will just be a cool passive generating mana you know area for us and it can't hurt to have extra mana so as you can see it's it's a little bit slow right now but of course we've got a ton of oak wood in here that's processing and probably a ton of charcoal in the bottom down there. So again, going to keep checking on this stuff. All good. But like I said, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like. It does help me out a lot. And I just want to say again, I hope you guys are enjoying your holiday break, having a lot of fun with your families. And uh, I hope you're excited to have a fun Christmas. If you do celebrate Christmas, I actually have a kind of funny story I thought I'd tell you guys about it right now before I end the episode because if you're sticking around till now, hopefully you like me as a person. But I was in my room today, I was playing some Path of Exile, which is kind of the game that I play with Minecraft a lot. Um, it's my ARPG of choice, I guess. And I was just grinding away at it and my sister bursts into the room and she's like, she's like, oh my gosh, Kyle, the tree fell. And so I went downstairs and I guess our tree, no one touched it, but it fell over. And we usually have like a, an 11 foot tree. So propping that back up was kind of a pain in the butt. And I don't, I guess it fell because it got a little top heavy. For some reason, the base on this tree is not very, very wide. Um, so about halfway down, it really doesn't get much wider. So I guess it kind of got top heavy and fell over. So I had to go outside and pick up a bunch of big rocks from the stone wall that is behind our house and put it on the stand that the tree is in so it wouldn't fall over anymore. And luckily no ornaments broke, no one got hurt or anything, but I was my, for some reason it was my job to get the rocks, to prop this 11 foot Christmas tree back up, do all of this stuff and fix it. And I wasn't even there when it fell. For all I know, someone was like trying to climb the tree or something. And they're just like, oh, let's get Kyle to do it because, because he wasn't here and he'll totally do it. So uh, yeah, just, Keep an eye on your Christmas trees if you have them and make sure they don't fall over so you don't end up like me uh, propping it back up in the middle of the afternoon. But again, I hope you guys are having a great break and I will talk to you later.